You know, I was supposed to record this last night, but I, I just didn't feel like recording it. I think my voice got a little bit too tired last night after doing the FCS first round preview and predictions. We gained a new subscriber from that. But let's get into the FBS, Major College Football 2021, week number 13, Rivalry Week. Yes, Rivalry Week, I know. A lot is going to happen this week that we know of. And the first big thing that happened was Dan Mullen getting fired from Florida. That, that was the first big thing that happened, you know, carrying over from the weekend. Um, we'll be talking about Missouri a little bit here in a moment, but just a disastrous season for the Gators after, you know, playing Alabama so close. And after that, they just fell off. I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, how people are really feeling about Dan Mullen. I mean, I think the shoe game was really the big catalyst here, but there was such a drop off, you know, from where Florida was from last year to this year. Uh, people probably should have expected it. Maybe they shouldn't have, you know. Who knows? Florida's just not in a good position right now. They still have to play Florida State to get the bowl eligibility. Both those teams do. There's going to be. We already have 73. We got one last night in one of the MAC games. Um, Ball State was able to become bowl eligible last night. So good on them. So we have 73. We will have at least 77 by the end of, you know, by the end of the week this week. And we need it. We need five more. So after. You know, two five and six teams square off in four different matchups. You know, that'll get us to 77. We'll just need five more after that. So whoever those five teams are, who knows? Well, why don't we get started on Thanksgiving night? Thanksgiving night gives us a treat of a matchup. The Egg Bowl. Matt Corral, Will Rogers. Both these guys play lights out football. We all, we all know this. Rodgers, especially these past couple weeks, they're going to have a barn burner type matchup on Thanksgiving. A lot of points are going to be scored here, I think, in my personal opinion. Ole Miss trying to secure themselves a big time bowl game, I think. You know, can't get to the SEC championship now, but they can get themselves, you know, something even sweeter. Maybe it'll be a little sugary, potentially. Who knows? Um, Friday. Friday night is going. I mean, Friday is going to be really not Friday night. The entire day on Friday. Friday is going to be really, really intriguing for some of these conference races, especially. And the first one is a big one. You know, this is the second highlighted matchup after the Egg Bowl. Big matchup here: Boise State, San Diego State. Huge game in the Mountain West. Now, San Diego State needs to watch out for Fresno State on Thursday. They need to watch the San Jose State Fresno State game on Thanksgiving to see, you know, if San Diego State even needs to, you know, you know, play with the purpose. But they need to win this game, the Aztecs do. Um, they've struggled. I mean, I've, I've highlighted it before that the Aztecs have struggled throughout the season, and Boise State has gotten hot at the right time. But Boise's going to need some things to go their way. You know, they... They, 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 they've had they've had things not go their way, you know, this season with Air Force. All Air Force needs to do, I believe, is just win. Um, and coincidentally, all three of the Mountain teams that are in contention for the Mountain Division title are playing on Friday. So, a huge game all around. And, you know, that, that this is going to be big for the Mountain West. This is going to be big, you know, in all honesty, you know. Um, Iowa and Nebraska is going to be huge as well as we know. We can't overlook the Cornhuskers despite the fact that they're 3-8. Iowa can't overlook them either. They need to win this game. They need to get to 10 wins. That's the first thing. They need for Wisconsin to lose on Saturday to be able to get to the Big Ten Championship. Huge opportunity for the Hawkeyes if they can win on Friday. And it's at a weird time too. It's like 12.30, like 1.30 Eastern. Weird time for a game. Um, Missouri and Arkansas, the battle line rivalry. Yes, um, Eli Drinkwitz, the guy who orchestrated the firing of Dan Mullen. That was the last straw, in all honesty. 
they 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 got things together. They they're looking pretty good right now. Missouri's on a hot streak themselves. They haven't beaten Arkansas in quite a while though. Um, Arkansas, you know, they they've had uh, such a good turnaround after you know being bad for so long. And you know you you know how Sam Pittman and crew do, do their thing. You know, I mean they they run. They can pass. They get, they're just a balanced offensive attack with a stingy defense. So this one's going to be interesting as well. A team that finally, you know, is ranked number four. Those Bearcats of Cincinnati, they're ranked number four. They can't overlook East Carolina, though. East Carolina has won four straight games to get the seven and four. And Desmond Ritter and crew just need to close this one out. If you close this out, win this game. You get to host the AAC championship. If not, you're going to Houston, and your playoff hopes will be dashed. So you can't overlook the Pirates. You can't overlook them. Colorado and Utah. Utah, we all know, is going to the Pac-12 championship, but they're awaiting their foe. And we'll talk. We'll touch on Washington State here too, as well. Washington State is one of the teams left in contention for the Pac-12 North title to take on Utah in the Pac-12 championship. We all know Colorado's terrible, so Utah's going to win this game pretty easily, in all honesty. But we need to watch the Apple, or rather, Utes fans need to watch the Apple Cup and the Civil War. We'll talk about the Civil War more in a minute here. But the Apple Cup on Friday night is going to be huge, you know, as well. Um, if Washington State wins and some things happen, you know, it, it could be Washington State, it could be Oregon, it could be Oregon State facing Utah. So Utah doesn't know. Um, but Camp Rising and Company, I expect them to take care of you of Colorado, excuse me, pretty easily. North Carolina and NC State. Now, NC State has a path to get to the ACC championship. It just depends on Wake Forest taking an L. Um, and we'll talk about Wake Forest here next up here. So this matchup here could be pretty spicy. I know there might be an entry with Sam Howell as well, if I'm not mistaken. But him and Devin Larry, if the, if the matchup occurs, it's going to be a one spicy QB matchup. The ACC quarterbacks have been producing this year. You know, teams not named Clemson. Um, those, those quarterbacks have been producing this year. And, you know, the Tar Heels... Matt Brown, it's never easy. It's never easy for North for North Carolina State. You know, North Carolina has had their number for quite a while now. Quite a while, you know, since Matt Brown has become head coach at North Carolina. You know. um, on Saturday, there is the number one team in the country. We all know Georgia. They're, they're going to take it on Georgia Tech. It should be an easy, easy victory for Georgia. And also the number 24 team in the country, Houston. Yeah, they, they finished up conference play last week. And they get to take on UConn. And UConn, we all know, is a borderline FCS team who hired a new coach. I forgot who the new coach was. It might have been Jim Mora, I think. I think it was Jim Mora. But, again, basically, Georgia Tech and UConn are about to get blown out like it's nothing. I really think that. Wake Forest taking on Boston College. All Wake Forest needs to do is just beat Boston College to get to the ACC Championship. If you don't beat Boston College, you have to hope for things um, for, for North Carolina State to not go the way that it should be going. Because, you know, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't lose this game to Boston College. Boston College had high expectations, you know, a couple weeks back, you know, against Clemson, you know. Or actually, it was like two months ago where I thought this Boston College team would be ranked, but they got. They, they, they just. I don't know what happened to Boston College. Like, they've had a season that's just been. Ugh, just kind of rough, in all honesty. And for, you know, the Baylor Bears, they're awaiting their fate for the Big 12 Championship as well. They have to wait for Bedlam and see how that plays out. But they need to not overlook Texas Tech. Do not overlook Texas Tech. Um, you know, Baylor has to win this game and complete a magical turnaround for them as well. Because remember, they only had what two wins last year. Magical, complete, completely magical turnaround for the Bears under Dave Aranda. But the big one in this time slot, you all know, the game, 
Ohio State, Michigan, top five matchup, huge game. Stroud, in all honesty, I think he's pretty much locked up the Heisman. I think, in all honesty, I know I said he shouldn't deserve it in the past, but I think with the way he's been playing, with the way these wide receivers have been playing, he's pretty much locked it up. There's no, there's no need to really talk about who the Heisman winner is anymore. But a Michigan running game that is strong. You know, it's going to be a good passing attack, going to be a good running attack with Kate McNair and company, you know, coming in. They, Michigan should be a little bit more healed up after, you know, they've got some injuries, you know, over the past couple weeks. They should be healed up now. But both these defenses, oh, this could be, this could be something. This could be something real good. I mean, we all know this Michigan's defense has been playing elite football the entire season. And Ohio State's defense has completely turned it around after poor performances the first couple of weeks of the season. They've turned it around so much. So, two great defenses, two different styles of offense. Going to be fun. Going to be very, very fun. Harbaugh, day, the game. Top five elimination, Big Ten East elimination, CFP elimination, just huge all around. So why don't we go to 3.30 Eastern, you know, around that time, you know. How about my alma mater, UNT, trying to get to the bowl game selection, They're trying to be one of those 82 teams going bowling, and if they beat UTSA, who is ranked number 22, personally, a lot of people... I kind of want the Roadrunners like a little bit higher. I personally think so as well, but they've had some really, really close calls in games. In fact, they probably should have lost last week, but it is what it is. So I am definitely being a negative Nancy and rooting for my alma mater, UNT, to beat UTSA in this game. Yes, I said that, and I'm going to stick with it. Um... UTSA, we all know, is going to the CUSA championship, but if they can take down North Texas, take take care of North Texas pretty easily, take care of their, you know, whoever between Marshall and Western Kentucky in the CUSA championship, things will be smooth sailing. For UTSA likely going to the Independence Bowl. Likely. We don't know yet, but it's likely. We'll talk about the other team last who potentially could be going up against UTSA in the Independence Bowl. Um, Penn State taking on Michigan. Michigan, I mean, not Michigan. Michigan State, excuse me. Michigan State, yeah. It's hard. It's, it's a little bit hard for Michigan State fans right now. The Spartans, you know, lost last week, ended their CFP hopes. Um, and with James Franklin, you know, completely completely going completely over the USC rumors, tearing those rumors up and signing an extension the way he did. I believe it's to like 2031 or something like that. Yeah, this one's going to be interesting. Michigan State trying to, you know, get, continue to win, get themselves in a position to where they can, you know, get that, get that big time bowl game themselves. Um, but Penn State's tough. We all know that Penn State is a tough team to play, despite the fact that Penn State has four losses. Yeah. Two teams, definitely something to play for. Something to play for, you know, bowl positioning too at this point. You know, something to play for in, you know, Big Ten East with the gauntlet that it was. Alabama and Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Oh, boy. No Bo Nicks. Yeah, he got injured a couple weeks back. Ended his season. And Brian Harson and crew need to get it together. They need to get something together. Like Auburn was at one point, you know, they only had, you know, they, they, they had some close losses early in, in the season and stuff like that. And then they just not looked great since then. Like they look, they look like a team that should have been capable of doing some damage. But the past few weeks, they've just completely collapsed. They're 6-5, and five, so... This this is this is gonna be weird. This is gonna be a little bit weird. We all know that Alabama isn't the Alabama that we usually are accustomed to seeing. You know, this Alabama team has not looked the part at times, despite having a still solid offense and solid defense. But it's just not completely there for the Crimson Tide. It's just not completely there yet. So can't play the Tigers close. Can't lose to the Tigers. That'll get you knocked off the CFP discussion. 
tied. It'll, it'll get you knocked out of the CFP race if you lose this game somehow. Um, we all know the SEC Championship is set, so there's no need to talk about that just yet. But Alabama cannot overlook Auburn. They can't. You know, they really, really can't. The Civil War. Oregon State and Oregon. This one is going to be a huge one. Not one of my highlighted games, though. Um, if the Ducks lose this game, they're not going to the Pac-12 Championship, in all honesty. You know, unless, you know, something happens to Washington State. You know, but if the Ducks can't lose this game. This is going to be two two running base teams. Um, we all know about Die and Cardwell for Oregon, but B.J. Baylor for the Beavers, I mean, he's been playing pretty good this year. Um, so this one's going to be huge. How will this game, you know, shape up? Because Oregon State has improved this year. Usually they'd be a doormat, you know, but they've really improved. They really got things together since, you know, early in the, early in the season when they weren't looking too great as well. You know, they, 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 I mean, this is going to be a huge matchup, huge matchup here. And if Oregon loses this game, they're probably not even going to the Rose Bowl, in all honesty. You know, Rose Bowl is on the line here as well for both of these teams, you know, in all honesty. Big one here is going to be Wisconsin, Minnesota. I really think this is a bigger game. This means more because the Big Ten West. It, it's it's a little weird. It's getting a little weird, and it also depends on Purdue as well taking on Indiana. Uh, but we all know about the Iowa Nebraska thing. We talked about that already. But Braylon Allen for Wisconsin and this Wisconsin defense, they they really look great. Braylon Allen been running the ball very well. Graham Burt's playing efficient. So what does PJ Fleck and the Golden Gophers do? What do they do? What do they need to win. Again, they need to they need to stop. They need to stop Braylon Allen first off. They need to stop Graham Mertz second off. They need to somehow contain this defense to be able to score with Tanner Morgan and crew. Who do, who do, who knows? You know what's going to happen in this game? You know, because hey, this this one's going to be fierce. This one's going to be intense. I, in all honesty, um, so Minnesota needs things to happen for them to be even be able to make the Big Ten championship. Maybe face Ohio State again. But these two teams are on different trajectories. You know, Wisconsin, you know, at the beginning of the season did not look great. They improved. Minnesota, on the other hand, they were raped at one point. Completely imploded with that. So, no margin for error for either team here. No margin for error. Alright, let's get into the later games here. And we start with Texas A&M and LSU. We all know Ed Ogeron is on his last ride here at LSU. Could it be his last game, you know, right now with Texas A&M? Or will LSU be able to go bowling? Because the, the Tigers are 5-6. and six. They, will, they need to go bowling. They, if they want to go bowling, they got to beat A&M. But A&M's defense is pretty good. Pretty good defense there, you know. So this is definitely going to be interesting to see. You know, the quarterback battle also pretty interesting. Um, the running back battle also an interesting one as well, you know. But not going to be really looking at this game in all honesty. You know, a and completely out of the discussions for any sort of SEC championship or CFP aspirations or anything like that. So there's no reason to really watch this one right here. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State on the other hand, big one. Big time game here. Bedlam, this might be the ugliest game this season, in all honesty. This is the second biggest game of the day, in all honesty. You know, the, the Big 12, you know, hasn't been valued very well by the committee, and for good reason. There is a good reason for that, in all honesty. Oklahoma State did not look good early in the season, they really turned it around. Defenses look great, you know, this year as well. Uh, and Oklahoma's defense also turned it around. Remember, this is the same Oklahoma team early in the season that gave up, you know, so many points to Texas, so many points to Tulane, which are, you know, two teams that are not great, you know. So now these defenses have gotten it together. They've gotten it completely together at this point, and they. It, it, it's, it's it's the problem. The problem here is the offenses. The problem here is the offenses. Um, Oklahoma State's offense, you know, it's 
enough to score some points, but not enough points to where you can comfortably say, yeah, yeah, this is an elite team. Oklahoma, same thing. They haven't been scoring very well the past few weeks. Remember when people were trying to say that Caleb Williams was the highest big contender, and that quick that door that door quickly shut, quickly shut. So, whoever said that, obviously you were smoking something. So, yeah, both these quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Spencer Sanders, gonna have to have big games, you know. But it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard against these defenses. It's gonna be hard. And you know, can Big 12 be able to gain some type of respect? We know that there will be at least two top 10, maybe even two top 15 matchups. You know. You know, over the next couple weeks, because again, you know, who knows how things will play out with the committee, because the committee is the committee. So, th this is going to be huge. Going to be a huge game. One of these teams will technically be knocked out of CFP contention, but Big 12 Championship for both might still be on the line. So, we'll see. We'll see if we hit a Bedlam Part 2. Clemson just needs to wait. They need to wait, and they're going to have to wait all day until their game against South Carolina to know if they're going to the ACC Championship or not. All they need is Wake and NC State to lose. And that, that could potentially happen. You know, Clemson's finally looked like the team they were supposed to be at the beginning of the season. They finally looked like that team. And, you know, South Carolina's no slouch, but if Clemson can play like they played against Wake Forest, might be trouble. Might be trouble for the Gamecocks. Pitt is awaiting whoever that team will be that they will face. We know it's Syracuse. Syracuse is a little tricky, but not tricky enough, you know, because, I mean, obviously they've been beaten by every other team in the Atlantic, you know, pretty easily. So the fact that this matchup here, you know, uh, it is happening and it, it it could spell disaster for the orange it could spell disaster who knows what kind of disaster it will be with Kenny Pickett and crew but Pitt definitely probably needs to be ranked a little higher but I mean I get it it is what it is there Notre Dame could still make the playoffs I know I know every metric you know is favoring Notre Dame I've looked at metrics and stuff like that even the committee is favored Notre Dame so yeah Notre Dame still has a path they just need things to go their way behind them and in front of them and some of this will take care of itself some of this will not and all they got to do for right now is just dominate Stanford we know Stanford's not a good team so there's no point it really you know talking about Stanford I mean sure Stanford has to win over Oregon but that was definitely a fluke win you know, as we all know, but it, 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 I mean, is there a way for Stanford to beat Notre Dame? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I, I don't think so at all. And last, but certainly not least, is the number 13 ranked BYU Cougars waiting for a chance to go into the top 10, potentially. They, they still have a shot to get into the top 10, which is crazy to me crazy stuff right there. They still have a shot to get to the top tip. They still have a shot to go to a New Year's Six Bowl. And they're probably going to run all over USC at the USC's chances of getting to a bowl game with Tyler Algier. As we know, Tyler Algier has looked amazing this year. Definitely an underrated back. You know, he you know, He's had, what, four 200-yard rushing games this year? So, this might be a disaster for a USC team that just did not look good against the run these past couple weeks. Um, so, yeah, there, there's that. That's that's it for the games and everything like that. There's a lot of stakes, a lot of stakes here. A lot of stakes for a lot of teams. There's only eight teams left in contention for the college football playoff. Two of these games are going to result in teams getting knocked out of the discussion for being playoff contenders so you know bet love the game definitely keep an eye on those keep an eye on the iron bowl as well too but um again my five were you know diff were different than some other people's five games to watch um 
but yeah, keep an eye on the Egg Bowl Thanksgiving night. Definitely take a look at that early. It's an early Mountain West showdown, too. Remember, it's like 9 a.m. for that game between Boise and San Diego State. And then, you know, the game, whatever the Big Ten West is doing, at Bedlam. So, definitely going to be fun Saturday for all. And I can't believe we get one last good look at Pac-12 After Dark. I know, right? It's crazy stuff that we even get a Pac-12 After Dark. I mean, I know there's a game after on December the 4th, but that's a game that's going to be made up, and it probably won't matter in the end. So, you know, it is what it is there. So with that being said, everybody, I'm going to Seattle, and I'll come back in a few hours or so to talk about the NFL, because I want to get that out before. For, you know Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving games are gonna go on all day so I can't release the video for the NFL preview for week what 11 you know like like that you know like not even like an hour before the game starts so I don't, I don't know but I'll release the NFL week 11 or 12 I can't remember what week we're on I think we're on week 12 so that preview will be up later today probably tonight so y'all take care I'll see you later on. Let's enjoy a beautiful college football weekend. Could be a beautiful Thanksgiving, I can guarantee you that. See you, everybody.